In this one, I wanted to talk about the difference between the charge compensator and the uh, receiver. Well, here's a little refrigeration system with a receiver on it. And the receiver is mounted usually pretty close to the condenser. We have liquid refrigerant, condensed uh, liquid refrigerant coming into the receiver here drops down the bottom of the receiver there's a dip tube on the outlet that goes down to the bottom and so liquid refrigerant can come out of this as long as there's any refrigerant in it well why do we have it okay the reason for this thing is pretty simple uh, refrigeration systems and this is like a uh, 40 degree box that's come out of refrigeration systems operated varying loads some pretty spectacularly variant let's say I've got a lot of uh, product that I brought into my walk-in cooler okay the load on this is going to go way up that means it needs more refrigerant so you've got liquid refrigerant coming in here TXV down here by the evap it's going to open up because it wants to maintain the superheat so it's going to dump a bunch of refrigerant in there well it's going to need a lot more refrigerant than it would need at say just a very if it was just holding temperature there's quite a bit of difference between the loads between those two so there, you need some place for this extra refrigerant to go that's why the receivers here this thing is going to start filling up when the load drops off and it'll drop down when the load increases. Uh, in some ways that's similar to a charge compensator but there are differences certainly in operation. So let's take a look at the charge compensator and what it does. Okay, now here I've got this drawing. I used this before in an earlier video and here's the charge compensator. It's a pretty simple device suction line going through here suction slash discharge line it gets cold re liquid refrigerant comes in here and fills this up because of the cold refrigerant coming through okay pretty different device than the uh, receiver so when this thing is under operation hot gas comes in here turns into liquid then passes through the expansion device to the evap here superheated cold gas coming through here that's that central pipe right there okay and the tap coming from the liquid line goes up into here and because it's cold it moves in there now why did we put why did we do this at all I've explained this before but I'll go over it again uh, low load on a heat pump uh, that means the outdoor coil is now the evaporator it doesn't need as much refrigerant as it does say in the summertime when you're cooling so what happens is that refrigerant starts backing up in here and reduces the size of the condenser the effective size for condensing and you get high head pressure and I've told you before I've seen this happen where you would have very high head pressure and very high subcooling because the liquid refrigerant is building up in here because the expansion device is not asking for much this only is with a uh, TXV expansion device by the way okay so when this thing first starts to run and this uh, pipe cools down it's going to start drawing refrigerant in there now there's no real controls on this device uh, I would think it would continue to draw refrigerant in here either until it filled up which that may be the control on the device or uh, that the suction started warming because the evap was starving those are about the only two ways I think this thing would stop absorbing refrigerant in there so it's 
it's probably not the perfect device, but it does relieve that excess refrigerant that's put in here. Uh, I should say excess charge that uh, the, in the heat mode it really doesn't need that much charge. So it does pull that out. Now if this goes into defrost, this becomes hot gas discharge. This immediately dumps into what is now the evaporator on the inside. Uh, there's some concern that the, uh, the dumping of the liquid refrigerant in there could slug the compressor, which the only ones I've seen these on so far has been scroll compressors. And scroll compressors, they really don't slug. Not like a piston compressor does. So uh, that may be why they, why they use them. Some have said they should maybe have a restriction on the outlet here to feed small amounts of refrigerant in. Uh, they don't do it. You know, that's not something they do. So, uh, But that's the difference. They're both storing refrigerant that's not needed at the time they're operating, but they do it in a different manner. Uh, I suppose if I put this on a refrigeration system, it would get, well, <laughs> it wouldn't work. The receiver works. I can't, all I can see is this thing filling up full of refrigerant regardless of load. So uh, I don't think it could make a difference. But that's, that's a difference between the two. I would not call the compensator a liquid line receiver because it really isn't. It really doesn't work that way. Anyway, I hope I've explained this well. Uh, that's it on this one.